Two waves, each with a wavelength of 2 cm, leave a single source in phase and follow the path shown. Which of the following is the phase difference in radians between the two waves as they meet at point A? So they leave here, they take two different paths, and then end up at point A. So we'll label those two paths. So the top path, the longer path, is the one I'm putting in purple. And then you could see from this path that the total length traveled by that wave is 8 centimeters. And then we have the bottom path that reflects off that bottom surface and then meets at point A. And that length, add up the two 2.5s, that gives 5 centimeters. So then we can work out the path difference. So the path difference is just the difference in length of these two paths. And that would end up being 8 minus 5, which is 3 centimeters. So we know that one wavelength is equal to 2 centimeters. So if we were to do the path difference divided by one wavelength, that would give us 1.5 wavelengths. Or in other words, the 3 centimeters of path difference is equal to 1.5 wavelengths. And then we can think about how we convert that to phase difference. So I'll draw a little table here that converts the path difference to, or shows you the different path differences and the corresponding phase differences. So let's say we had a path difference of zero wavelengths. That would correspond to a phase difference of zero. One wavelength of path difference would be two pi. So one oscillation, if two waves are one oscillation apart, the phase difference is two pi. 2 pi is the same as 360. If the path difference is half a wavelength, well now it's just ratio. So if we know that the path difference of one wavelength is 2 pi, a path difference of half a wavelength would be pi. And this just continues. So 1 and a half would then be 3 pi, and so on. So if we look at what we have here, we have a path difference of 1 and a half wavelengths. That will correspond to a phase difference of 3 pi. But if you look at our options, none of these are 3 pi. So this is not incorrect. Our phase difference can be expressed as 3 pi. But when it comes to phase difference, you can always take away integer multiples of 2 pi to get your phase difference in an interval of 0 to 2 pi. So what I mean by that is, let's say we had a, well, we have a, we have a phase difference of 4 pi over here. We can take away 2 pi away from that twice to end up with a phase difference of zero. Same with the two pi, we can take away a phase difference of two pi to end up with a phase difference of zero. For three pi, we can take away two pi and end up with a phase difference of pi. So if your path difference is a whole number of wavelengths, then your phase difference can always just be expressed as zero. Because whether the path difference is one lambda, zero lambda, 10 lambda, a thousand lambda, it makes no difference. The two waves will still be in phase when they meet. Crests will meet crests, troughs will meet troughs. So those waves will be in phase. We can express the phase difference for all of those scenarios as zero. Similarly, if we were to have a path difference of one and a half lambda or 10 and a half lambda or 50 and a half lambda, the half lambda is the important part. That half lambda shift would correspond to a phase difference of pi. So all of these scenarios would have a phase difference of pi. So again, the general rule is, whatever our phase difference is, we can take away 2 pi as many times as we want to, to get our phase difference in an interval of 0 to 2 pi. And yes, we did that here. With the 1.5 wavelengths, we converted our 3 pi phase difference into pi, and pi would be our answer.